Hey everybody, this is um, Dr. Rose. Today is November 25th. It's the day before Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving and I hope that you are getting some time off or having some time off, spending it with your family, social distancing, um, and practicing all the precautions that will keep you safe. I have a couple of announcements um, that I felt like it was easier to create a video to share with you rather than sending repeated emails. So first of all, I wanted to let you know that your final exam is not comprehensive. It will cover uh, cardiac, thoracic, and neuro. That's it. So your final exam is not comprehensive. Uh, I looked at the content, looked at what we've covered, and looked at the complexity of the information covered in cardiac, thoracic, and neuro, and just decided I felt like it was too much for you. Uh, not that you're not brilliant and very capable students, but the content in thoracic, cardiac, again, and neuro is very intense. So let's focus on those three content areas for your final exam. And the final exam, <clears throat> I anticipate, will have approximately 75 questions on it. And I am in the process of developing it now. Moving forward, uh, your final exam is December 18th, as you know. Um, for December 4th, you have a quiz on that day. December 4th is quiz 8. It will cover cardiac, thoracic, and neuro. Um, for that quiz, I'm not going to get into the weeds or the granular details about those three content areas. Um, we're going to look more, uh, review more of the broader concepts. So again, you have a quiz on December 4th, uh, that's quiz eight, cardiac, thoracic, and neuro. And then you have a final exam on the 18th that is not comprehensive. So that covers your last quiz and your last exam. Um, the week of December 14th, I would like to schedule a, a one hour question and answer session for you to ask any final questions that you may have prior to taking the final exam. So be on the lookout for a, a Zoom link and time. Um, and I'll try to keep everyone's schedule or consider everyone's schedule since you will most likely be uh, in clinical during that week, which is great. Um, the other part piece is I wanted to go over a couple of questions um, on your exam, so on your exam two, that is. So thanks everyone for submitting your feedback. I think I have um, synthesized all of your comments and reviewed your reading content and reviewed the lectures, uh, your PowerPoints, and um, tried to issue credit for questions that upon further review could have been probably written a little bit better or some of the answer choices could have been eliminated to guide you to the answer that I was looking for. Um, one, of the, the, one, one of the questions that I received the most feedback on was the following. Pneumothorax and thoracic duct injury are least common with which of the following approaches to central circulation? The answer I was looking for was the right internal uh, was the right IJ. Many of you selected the femoral art, femoral vein, excuse me, which which does um, present which cannulation of that vein, yes, it would um, create the least incidence of pneumothoraces or thoracic duct injuries. I think you would have chosen right IJ if femoral vein had not been presented. So that is a text question that will be revised in the future, but you were given full credit for that um, if you selected femoral um, vein. The other question was related to anesthetic considerations for a patient with catecholamine secreting tumors. 
Um, many of you selected beta blockade, um, alpha blockade, um, and the um, volume kind of assessing preoperative volume status. So uh, obviously I gave you credit for beta blockade, but that question probably needs to be revised because what I was getting at is I think if the question had been worded preoperative assessment, that would have leaded you or guided you, excuse me, to um, volume assessing for volume repletion and assessing for alpha blockade. Um, those probably, or according to many of the texts, are two of the areas that you want to focus on when caring for patients that have these catecholamine secreting tumors because you want to make sure that they are adequately volume repleted and that they are alpha blocked prior to surgery. Now, they may be on a beta blocker, propanolol, metoprolol, what have you. Um, you really want to establish or determine how long they have been on an alpha blocker um, because as you know, you will want to alpha block first, then beta block. And I think that's what some of you all were getting at, which is correct. So um, I went and reviewed your test and gave you credit for that if you selected beta block eight. Moving on, autonomic nervous system dysfunction is seen with which are the following. Yes, if you selected hypothyroid, um, diabetes, uh, mellitus, or um, LEMS, you were giving credit for that, for your answer, um, uh, which is Eaton-Lambert syndrome or Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. If you selected growth hormone for hormones that can be released uh, in response to surgery, stress, and trauma, I gave you credit for growth hormone. Growth hormone probably should be or will be removed from the answers, answer choices because I really wanted you to select um, a catecholamine and, um, and vasopressin. So, um, what else should we look at? Uh, Keith Marino posted his rationale for the answer for the um, appropriate insertion of a high IJ, which is 15 to 16 centimeters. So if you'll refer to the announcements in Blackboard uh, for Keith Marino, I believe he posted that last night around 10 o'clock. You'll see his um, his rationale for that answer. Um, another question that I wanted to explain has to do with myocardial oxygen um, supply and demand and I believe the correct, oh here it is, one of the clinical benefits of epidural versus general anesthesia for lower extremity vascular surgery is. Um, some of you selected decreased myocardial oxygen demand and preserved SVR. It is true, yes, there is a decreased myocardial oxygen demand with epidural neuraxial anesthesia. However, it cannot be guaranteed that your systemic vascular resistance is preserved. So that answer choice has two parts to it decreased O2, myocardial oxygen demand, and preserved SVR. Because the second um, portion or portion, if you will, of that answer, answer choice says preserved SVR, that's why it's incorrect. Now, some of you sent me some very, um, very astute and much appreciated rationales, which included um, hemodynamic stability, um, preserved hemodynamic stability. While that is true, um, over the course of the case, uh, placement of neural actual, neuraxial anesthesia does not necessarily preserve your systemic vascular resistance. Remember, 
um, or note that placement of neuroaxial anesthesia, spinals and epidurals actually create a chemical sympathectomy uh, where your mean arterial pressure um, is decreased. I realize you've not had um, a lot of content, if any, on regional anesthesia, and I am ardently working on that uh, to pre prepare you um, as much as I can for your clinicals, the better answer choice is uh, decreased administration of packed red blood cells. So, uh, and I believe I took that question mm -hmm. directly from a chart in Nagelhout. Mm -hmm. So, um, those are some of the key pieces that I wanted to review <clears throat> with uh, exam number two. Some clinical pearls. Motor evoked potentials monitor the anterior spinal cord. Motor evoked potentials monitor the anterior spinal cord. Do not assume if uh, you are monitor, uh, monitoring the integrity of the spinal cord that the patient will be relaxed. Most times, uh, neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons will request no, mo no muscle relaxation, particularly when they are instrumenting the cervical spine and therefore monitoring motor evoked poten uh, potentials. Um, anytime you have an expanding hematoma or uh, inability of a patient to clear their airway postoperative post-operatively after any neck surgery, that is, uh, you should consider that an airway or an impending airway emergency. So um, if you have a patient in respiratory distress that's had a parathyroidectomy, thyroidectomy, that is an airway emergency. Um, the most common um, Ion imbalance after parathyroid surgery is hypocalcemia. And um, I'm trying to think what else did I want to pass along to you. Um, I think that's it. Overall, I think you did really well on this exam. Um, I've issued your points uh, for the questions that you have so um, that you brought to my attention and I appreciate that. And if you have any other questions, uh, any other concerns, please email me and um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye. Oh, happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe.